We're gonna see if you can call lightning to Thor's hammer. What's that noise? Hey guys, so I think one of the coolest things about running a YouTube channel is you never know who's watching your videos. So I've got a little story. A few months ago, we posted a vlog update and in that vlog, we had a baby Tesla coil. A few days later, we received an email from the president of Applied Tesla Technology, a company that makes giant Tesla coils. And the email was simple. Hey guys, we've been fans for a few years. We recently saw your video where you were playing with a little Tesla coil. You know what? We can do better. Let's talk. A few months later, they sent us down to Texas to play with their Tesla coils. We had a ton of fun, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this video. What's a better way to stretch after a long plane ride? You're hitting up the local rock climbing gym. <laughs> I play the, with the wall, I just, just climbed. That's what I'm doing. Hey guys, we're here at Applied Tesla Technology, uh, a company that makes giant Tesla coils. Chances are, if you've seen a giant Tesla coil on TV or at like a science center or something, these guys have made it and they invite us down to see how they make these things. My name's Aaron Kosko. I'm the president of Applied Tesla Technology. I've been doing this now for well over 10 years, building really cool high voltage equipment for every type of special effect, uh, event, display, research project you can imagine. Yeah, you know, around here, we're always just kind of waiting for that day where that eccentric millionaire tech mogul calls us and says, hey, can you put a 100 foot tall Tesla coil on my roof? Today we're using the Model 3 MTC. All right, we have really small Tesla coils like this half MTC you see behind you, all the way up to the 3 MTC out there. And we can go even bigger with custom sizes, but these are our standard rental models. So we're gonna make some pretty big arcs with this too. We've modified it for you guys so that okay. it's gonna run at about 30 kilowatts. It's 30 gonna kilowatts. make an arc about 20 feet long. <laughs> so it's the most power we can process through the system. That's it's awesome. gonna be really impressive. Is that pushing the breaker here? Oh yeah, this is gonna max out the main service we have here in the shop. So, when we started building the Tesla coils, we were working out of a two-car garage. Really nothing special going on, a couple of workbenches and just me, every now and then a friend helping me out. Uh, we got an opportunity to bid on a job for Metallica and that really blew it up for us. It was a huge workload, uh, really complicated project for what turned into being a three-person crew, but we pulled it off, and ever since then, we've been building these for really unique clients, just generally cool venues. So to give you an idea to how much power happens instantaneously here, each individual pulse that the arc is formed from is 1.4 megawatts of peak power. So we get this question all the time. Why do I see people on YouTube touching Tesla coils? <laughs> and why can't I touch yours? <laughs> well, first of all, the people on YouTube touching Tesla coils are usually touching really small ones. Uh, there's very little power contained in these battery powered things, or these you know, 12 volt, that looks like you get your cell phone charger and it powers your Tesla coil. That's very, very low power stuff. So by the time that power enters your body, it's not significant. That really is what it comes down to. The thing is we're doing this with 30 kilowatts here. We're not doing this with three watts. <laughs> so this stuff is really powerful and the amount of average power that it can put into a person is truly disturbing. So if you're interacting with these arcs, you have to be in a fair degree. You don't really have a choice. 1.4 megawatts doesn't go well with a person. The 30 kilowatts of average power cooks anything that you put in the arc. But the Faraday suit allows all that current to flow directly around you, straight to ground where it's totally safe. So when we have a large Tesla coil making a large arc, what we're doing for Thor's hammer and Captain America's shield here, we're growing the arc. It's, it's growing almost like a crystal grows. It's, so when you see this big arc that's 20 feet long coming out of one point, it's not actually what's happening at all. If you bring it down frame by frame 
and you look at it, especially if you're looking at it via something that's really fast, you can see that the arc is growing in sections. So we'll start with a pulse that's maybe a few hundred thousand volts. And that pulse might make an arc that's this long. And then, before that plasma channel dies off, we'll send another pulse of current into that plasma channel. And it'll add an arc that long to the end of it again. And it'll renew the original plasma channel as well. Until we get to a point where the plasma channel at the end can no longer be sustained before the one at the beginning falls away. It's pretty cool the way this actually happens. Not a lot of people realize that a Tesla coil happens this way. So for more information about any of these Tesla coils, visit our website, teslacoil.com, or actually look us up. We're trying to get a good uh, YouTube channel up, so hopefully you'll be able to see us on our new YouTube channel. So this is the uh, control box? Yeah, man. Yep. But yeah, that's what's going to control it. Sweet. And of course, everything's off. So yep. Digital over fiber. You can't do anything else with this. RF. Yeah. Actually, we can do RF. Oh, yeah? I have, yeah, I've got a Wi-Fi controlled prototype in there, too. Nice. We need to build a little control box for one of our projects that looks like this. That looks awesome. Yeah, on the CNC. They're all custom, so we have to tell them. Oh, wow. Basically, these sizes represented our best guess at the type of actors that we typically work with. Buddy, so, he was like an insurance salesman or something. He was like, oh, yeah, this is no. Oh, no, I can't bend far enough. Oh, oh no. He was doing like handstands and all kinds of stuff <laughs> off of a platform. And you can't get past here and <laughs> you can't kick back. That one should fit me a lot better. <laughs> You gotta jump into my arms. <laughs> Can someone pass me the cat? Because you I'm surprised. Oh, it's anger purring? Well, I'm wearing chain mail. There's a lot of room in the crotch. Oh, I've got tons of room in here. You need to fill that out. Yeah. They're not quite filling that out. It's just the dog's Yeah, we'll just tie in again. Who's going first? Is this possible? <laughs> it's possible, but like my legs have to go forwards because I can't go back because the chainmail is too tight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so balancing a bike on your heels in front of you. Actually, this, Ian, can you ride a bike? Yeah. Yeah, he can. This, this might be, this might be easier brought... with his flexibility in the loose suit. <laughs> <laughs> One of the fun things you can do with Tesla coils is play music.
we're going to see if it's possible to call lightning to Thor's hammer. <laughs> Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, from where I come from, they're one and the same. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope you're excited for our big Make It Real project featuring Thor's hammer. That's just one part of the video. So make sure you're subscribed, notifications turned on, and a huge thank you to Applied Tesla Technology. Please subscribe to their YouTube channel, and check out their website for some more awesome projects.